I'm heading to the town. This is something I was trying to avoid doing while my wife is away because now there's nobody at the house. Whew, these hills are, whew, these hills are something else. But yeah, I was trying to avoid this because I didn't want to not leave the house unattended. Of course we have our dogs, but especially after somebody having taken our pitchfork, now I'm a little bit nervous, but I have to go buy a pitchfork because I need it for the compost. So now this is gonna be the first time and hopefully the last time that I leave the house unattended. And uh, it's not a great day, but it is. It is nice. It's a little bit cooler down down there uh, because where we're at, kind of just coldness just kind of sinks down there. But and uh, let's hopefully I can do this a little bit fast. And I guess what do you guys think I should do then so that people don't keep taking my stuff? What do you think is the best bet? on a budget because all of our money goes to house we're actually going to start buying some of the battens so we can start putting those up too so what would be a budget friendly option putting up fencing barbed wire getting a new dog buying new cameras what do you think so i was kind of debating with myself of which one to actually use when it comes to weeding the potato patch. I feel like, because it's heavier, I can think I could do a lot more damage with this, but I feel like I'm gonna hit a potato. So I think I'm gonna have to go with this one, uh, which is smaller, the tiny, the tiny hoe. But uh, yeah, I just don't wanna hit the potatoes. But mm, I'm not really sure which one I'm gonna choose. So what do you guys think? Big damage, small takes long. We'll see. All right, so I've kind of decided on neither. Good old machete. Hopefully I don't cut anything uh, because this is really, really tall. I think it needs to kind of be cut down a little bit first. I'm not really sure what's potato right now. Let's see, none of those are potatoes. Okay, here's the hoping. They're everywhere. Just both weeds and potatoes. Let's hope I don't get any of this stuff here. We got this crazy guy. I'm gonna put him over here now. He's gonna be exiting. Oh man, what is happening here? Oh, the guy was not doing too hot down there. So all of this is just gonna take a while. So I'm not gonna bore you guys with that footage. We cannot forget about these guys. Avocados. Look, there's always baby avocados. And my wife keeps ripping them out, but uh, they keep coming back. Oh, oh. If I accidentally cut one of these avocados, that is not gonna be good. I also probably have to clear this path because that's our little drainage from our from our bathroom. So when it comes to cutting all of these things. You know, it is. it does take time and effort, and especially that we don't keep up with it right now. But uh, my wife wants to get a, uh, a weed whacker. So what do you guys think? Do you think that in the near future we, can, we should buy a weed whacker? We have quite a bit of land, so I assume maybe that would be the best thing in the long run. But I don't know if... But I don't know if that's like an immediate purchase that we need to do. We have machetes. I have one, she has one. So maybe we could just do that. Plus you get like, get to, get to like release your anger with some of this like machete work. Um, but the weed racker would make things a little bit faster. You wouldn't be able to go inside these little patches of where we're growing stuff. But what do you guys think? Machete 
or weed whacker. Physical labor, gotta pay for gas. I don't know. All right, I went with the tiny one. Just because I, I'm not gonna get in here with that big guy. Hey, are we supposed to sharpen this? Is that what we're supposed to do? So like it cuts through it all? I don't know. I know I'm asking you guys a lot of questions. Hopefully you guys like flood the comment section when answering all these questions. Normally I would just bounce all these ideas off of Brenda, but she's not here. So I'm going to do that with you guys. It'd be great if it was a two-way street in conversation, but if not, it's okay. I understand. Are you supposed to stake your potatoes? Oh, no. I think I was just stepping on a potato. No. Okay. Because for some reason, without staking them, they're all falling over. A potato used to be there, but not anymore. That potato died. Something ripped it out. All right, so this is going to take a little bit, guys. And uh, to be honest, I don't know how to really fast track in the editing. So instead, I'm just going to cut it off. And then hopefully uh, I'll be done with enough of this and then I'll cut it back on. Bye. So back here is our corn, of course. I don't want to chop anything off. Mess it up in any type of way. Our corn has gotten through some damage, actually. Uh, one of the other days we saw it completely toppled over because of all the heavy winds and everything like that. And so we had to prop them back up and tie them because they had fallen over. And this one is actually already flowering. There you go. So which is kind of cool, this is the first time we've ever seen corn flower firsthand. But the bad thing is that it's flowering on its own. And from what I know about corn, from what I know about corn is that it needs air poll pollination. So if there's nothing else, I assume it doesn't pollinate itself. I assume it's supposed to pollinate everything else around it. And that's why you're, you clump them all together. But it's the first one, it was fast. But uh, we'll see what happens to it. We'll see if you actually get, I, I doubt you'll get a, corn, a cob or an ear, right? They're called the ears, but we'll see. Let me just finish up here. And then if I have time before it starts raining, I'm gonna go up to do the lemons. So, can you spot the lemon? It is a jungle in here. So there it is. That tiny little thing right there. That's why you shouldn't go crazy swinging. Blackberries right into my finger. But when it comes to immediately the problem, I assume everything else around it is fine. I'm very nervous. Blackberries everywhere. I'm just gonna cut off these as well. All right, don't tell Brenda that I've been cutting up a lot because I, I stopped her from cutting up. So between me and you, she's not here. I can do anything I want now. Do, 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 do. Make sure I cut that. All right, besides that, I think it's fine. All of this stuff is not gonna be in the way. The sun comes from over there. I'll come check when it's a sunny day, see if this bad boy blocks its way. If not, and then uh, it'll, it'll, it'll stay. I think I'm just gonna do a couple of the, the road as well. And that'll be it for chopping, chopping. I should have done a before and after of the road. Darn it. Ah. 
this is a little bit of the before i cut off quite a bit of grass there so now you can actually see the step that's a really before i'm going to trim that out and then you'll see like a quick after it's not going to be the same but yeah I'm, I'm i'm thinking about just keeping all of these here because they're little flowers and i think they're pretty we have more over here but look at that guy i like that one All right, so here's a little bit cleaned up. Uh, that's just debris. I just have to sweep those out of the way, so you can see. But now you can actually see the stairs, which is way better than what it was before. Now, I don't want to cut that guy. It's like a little tree. I'm a big fan of keeping things. But one thing in particular I'm not sure to keep or not is this guy down here. So it is blocking the road, but it's not on the road. And it's, give me one second, it's this guy right here. So as you can see, it blocks the road. It's kind of like in the way, there's Isco, he's demonstrating the way we would have to walk up and down. Uh, but these have so many flowers, as you can see. And every morning I see those big fat bumblebees, I believe they're called bumblebees. Uh, they always go to this these flowers in the mornings and I don't want to cut it in gonna deprive them of what they've been doing every day of course eventually of course eventually the flowers will die out and then I'll chop it up maybe but until then I don't want to mess until then I don't want to mess with what the birds have it is a terrible day it's already started like drizzling on and off in between so I've been having to hide the phone in my pocket I just don't want to mess it up but yeah I'm just gonna chop off a little bit more Hopefully it doesn't rain and then figure out the next thing I'm going to do today. Ooh, question for you guys. I'm cutting off everything like you've seen, like I've shown you, and I'm going to cut up a little bit more. But is it better to have them? I think I have something in my beard. Is it better to just leave all the greens on the, on the stairs to prevent erosion? Because I was thinking about that, but I'm not too sure like if that'd be better or if it'd be better to actually get it out because when... When it rains, the water kind of just sticks with the grass and sometimes it becomes slippery. But it can become slippery even without the grass because it's muddy. So what do you guys think? Do you guys think it's better to leave them be? Do you, better, do you think it's better to like leave them be so that they kind of prevent erosion maybe? Or is it better to chop them all off and deal with the erosion or the muddiness instead? All right, it's starting. I have to come back and get everything. I'm, so I was trying to come to do this too. So I put tape on them, some duct tape, and uh, to kind of keep them in place a little bit. So now I'm going to have to do that tomorrow because they're kind of coming off. And that's that's very important. We've already dealt with it once where it broke off and that was not a fun thing to do. Coming out here in the bad rain to try to fix it up. So tomorrow it's already starting to drizzle. Uh, the tarp kind of tells us this is the warning sign because we don't feel it sometimes, but that'll start to, you'll hear all the droplets. But yeah, so hopefully it doesn't continue raining. And if not, I'll do the, the duct tape. If I can't, there's always tomorrow, I suppose. All right, so today was going to be a little bit different. Uh, last time I had picanha. Now I have some ground beef. I'm going to make a couple of different patties. Uh, my wife says she made them before she left, so... I thought they were really good, so she made them at four ounces each. So I think I went a little bit crazy. I think I ordered a lot, but I, you know, you can just freeze them and do it for later on. But I'm gonna make a couple. I already started breaking into it before to like see. Uh, so I'm gonna try to get a couple of four ounces. And then I have some Ziploc bags here that I'm gonna put them into. I'm gonna eat some today. Yeah, one. I'm gonna eat some today and then I'll just store the rest later on. So besides burgers, what are some things you guys make with your ground beef? And then how do you make them as well? I'm making some terrible circles. You need to get me a better scale. The scale is not that great to be honest. It moves around a lot. It's not an electric scale. It's just a, a normal spring scale. So I assume it can be off. I assume it's not terribly. A lot. 
So I'm gonna finish this up. I'm gonna pack a few in there. So I got eight of them and I stored them up in twos. So two burgers per meal. Uh, yeah, I think that's pretty good.